everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel, Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you a recent reads video. So, it has been a week since I last checked in for a recent reads video, a bit of an up and down reading week, if I'm being completely honest, but we'll get into that as we go on. First off, we will talk about the five books that I did read over this past week. So, um, the first book that I completed this past week was Every Last Promise by Kristen Halbrook. Um, this is a YA contemporary. I think I called it, if you saw my recent uh, a vlog that I put out, then I think I referred to it as a mystery thriller. It's not really. It's contemporary. Um, it's about a girl who, uh, at the start, right at the end of the school year, of the end of her junior year of high school, uh, she is involved in a car accident. She's driving a car with two boys um, in it and one of the boys is injured and one of the boys is killed. Um, and she, following the accident, ends up leaving town for the summer. She lives in like a very small town in, I think it's in Nebraska. Um, she ends up leaving town. No, it's not Nebraska, it's Missouri. I think it's Missouri. Anyway, not that it matters. She um, ends up leaving town for the summer, going to Kansas for the summer and ends up coming, yeah, Kansas City, ends up coming home. No, so it might not be Kansas. I think it's Kansas City, but it might be Kansas City, Missouri. Anyway, none of this matters. Since so going when, when she comes back to, at, to town at the very end of the summer, like at the start of the, she comes back at the start of her senior year of high school. There's also an added element to the story that when she was driving this car and had this car accident, she was on the way back from a party um, and she saw something at this party um, that, has like affected her quite a lot and we're basically following her trying to grapple with um the aftermath of this car accident and the aftermath of what she saw at this party and trying to decide what to do um about everything and like she is also someone who loves the small town that she grew up in she does not want to move away um for college she just wants to stay in this small town um that she lives in um and live there forever um and her life is really torn apart by um everything that happened um i so this book should be kind of right up my alley because it deals with a lot of subject matter that i personally really enjoy in my stories but there are a few things that i didn't like that just like i don't know felt a little off to me like when she comes back to um town everyone is like hating on her massively because of this car accident um, and like calling her a murderer and all of this stuff because of this boy that died, which is obviously incredibly tragic, but I just didn't understand the hate towards her. Um, maybe like from his family who are obviously um, really, really grappling with grief and can feel like she's responsible because she was driving, but for the whole town, like in general, and like all of her friends who she went to school with, including her friends, her best friends that she's had for years, really struggling with her, um, and like struggling with what she did. But, and it's not, and to be clear, this is not a case of her having the accident because she was drinking. She was not drinking. It was not a drink driving incident. It was just a car accident where she happened to be driving and unfortunately someone was killed. Um, and so I didn't understand that. I was like, I just can't imagine hearing that someone was in a like terrible car accident where a person died and, and being angry at them and thinking of them as a murderer for that. Like that just didn't make any sense to me. And also the whole storyline around what um, the main character saw at this party. Um, I don't know. I didn't particularly love the way that that, like, I didn't understand a lot of the elements around that as well. Overall, the story was like good, but like, not good. I don't I wouldn't say good. Like it was okay. Like I enjoyed it for the most part, but there was a lot of angering subject matter and all of that in there. But like, what didn't like blow me away. In the end, I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. Um, I then read As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. If you saw, again, my vlog that went up uh, recently that from last weekend, then you will have known. I didn't give full in-depth thoughts, but you'll know that I didn't like it. And boy, did I not like it. This book. Okay, so this is a, I guess I consider it, well, I've just... I think referred to it previously as a classic. It is more of a modern classic, I guess you would call it. it was originally published in 1930, I think it was. Um, and it's basically just about the story of this family who are very 
are poor, um, very impoverished, um, who the matriarch of this family basically dies. Um, and it's about the um, journey that the family, her family, her husband and her four, I think it's four sons. Yeah, there's four sons and her daughter go on basically to bury her body because she came from like another area, like close-ish, but another area different to where they currently were living. And she wanted, had always expressed her desire that she wanted to be buried back where she um, came from. And so they're going on this like journey to deliver her body back to their um, like for burial, basically. Um, and oh, I really, really, really did not get along with this style of writing. William Faulkner writes in this really, I don't even like, I don't want to say, this is going to lie, I'm going to sound like a complete idiot the whole time I talk about this book, because I'll admit that a big part of my lack of enjoyment of this book was me just not understanding most of it. I think it is written in quite a metaphorical way that William Faulkner says something, but without saying it. And I was too dumb most of the time to get what he was saying. Um, so he... Like I mentioned in my vlog that I actually read along with the spark notes, um, summaries of the chapters as I was reading. So I would read like four or five chapters and then I would read the, um, Giles is trying to knock everything off my desk. Um, I was, would read the spark notes summary of that chapter. And for the first couple of chapters, it was all like, yeah, yeah. Okay. But then we got to like certain chapters where I'd read the summary and the summary would say that something was revealed in that chapter. Um, this isn't too much of a spoiler. It happens fairly early on. So I'm going to say what it is but if you don't want to know just skip like 10 seconds ahead or I'll put my hand up and skip to when I put my hand down a character is revealed as being pregnant and I literally was like what how was that I did not pick up on that at all in the writing and I even went back and reread the chapter and still did not figure out that that's what was being said okay I may have been able to pick up on that I think from later chapters um, through clues, like through that and then be like, oh, okay. But I don't, I would never have realized that it was, had been revealed in that previous chapter, stuff like that. And then overall, just the language itself, I didn't really get uh, the meaning and the great point behind the story. Not that every story has to have a point, but like, I just didn't think it was like an enjoyable story. I just honestly really, really did not get along with it. I don't know if I would try Faulkner again, if this is, his style of writing because I just don't think his style of writing is for me um, and in the end I gave that one two stars. Do you guys hate filming with your hair in a ponytail because you just look at yourself in the viewfinder the whole time and think that you look bald? I'm not bald I actually have this incredibly messy fishtail braid um, but I haven't washed my hair in a couple of days and so I had to tie my hair back and now I look bald and I tried to pull all these face framing bits out to like not look bald on camera but I swear I'm not bald. Okay I'm not bald, but I'm not like, oh, whatever. Okay, the next book that I read, I listened to on audio, and that is Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a YA, I think I would put it more in the horror category. Um, it's set in like a contemporary kind of setting, but it's very like horror elements and some like real um, like speculative elements in there. Um, we're basically following three female characters who are all living on this island. If you guys know me, you'll know I love a book set on an island. Um, two of the girls have lived there um, their whole lives. And one of the girls has recently moved to this small town um, on this island um, following um, the death of her father. Um, and this island has had several... Uh, teenage girls go missing over the course of quite a long time um, that no one's ever like found out what happened to them um, and one of the other female characters not the new one but her best friend was one of the girls who's like been gone missing and just never been found and then we're also following a character who's like the kind of it girl the like really popular you know girl who's like the you know well off super revered uh darling of the island and I really 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 enjoyed this book it is so dark like this book gets really 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 dark this is I like I said it's YA 
but it's definitely for older YA readers. Like I would not be giving this to like a 13, even 14 year old. Like I definitely think this is more like, I don't even know 15, like 15 kind of at a minimum, I would say. Cause like my niece turns 14 in um, like th four months and I would not give this book to her at this point. Um, not that I, like if she read it, I'd be like, okay, but it, it gets pretty dark. Um, it would depend obviously on the type of child that they were and what they can. Anyway, God, I'm going on the biggest, most inconsequential rants in this video. Um, it gets really, really, really dark. It also has a lot of diversity in it. We have a female-female relationship in the book. There is an asexual character. I don't think asexual is ever, is it said? It might be I, actually, but I can't recall. But um, it is discussed and like, it's clear that that's what's being represented. One of the characters um, is black. There was just like a lot of um, diversity in there as well, which I really, really enjoyed. I really enjoyed, I like really liked the like romance was in there. And I'm not, the romance is not a big like element of the story really, but the part of it that was in there, I really, really enjoyed. I loved how dark everything was. There is such good like atmosphere. Like the book is incredibly atmospheric, um, super creepy vibes, all of that. I genuinely really, really enjoyed it. I gave it 4.25, but there's a little asterisk next to that. I might bump that to a complete 4.5 because I honestly did I really, really enjoy it. I should say that I um, the audiobook is narrated by Lauren Ezzo. I then listened on audio to um, Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib, Adib Karam. This is the sequel to Darius the Great is Not Okay. Um, this one is narrated on audio by Michael Levi Harris. So I read Darius the Great is Not Okay on audio earlier this year. Um, and these are kind of YA contemporary stories that... Um, deal with um um well they deal with a lot of things um we're following Darius who is a teenage boy um the first book is set um quite a lot around that he is um a Persian um Persian American and his family end up traveling um uh back to um where his mother's his mother's like his mother's his maternal grandmother and grandfather live um so that um because his grandfather is dying um and it's about that um story um to Iran sorry I should have said I could have just said where they travel to they travel to Iran um and it's about really these books are really coming of age stories but they have a lot of um again diversity in there um Darius obviously is like I said Persian American um he also has depression um and like diagnosed depression where he's on medication and his father is also um has depression um and like I said he is medicated he's also um struggles a lot with his own body image he is like a chubbier I guess you would say um main character and struggles with that he is also really discovering his sexuality like in the first book so there's a lot kind of going on in there. I enjoyed the first book. Um, I gave it 3.5 stars. I enjoyed the characters and I liked like a lot of what was going on in there about the coming of age aspects. But the first book just kind of, there were parts in the middle where it got really kind of meandering and like not a lot was happening. Um, and so that's why I gave it 3.5. I liked this sequel even better than the first book. Again, all of that diversity is in there. There is the thing that I loved the most about this book is the commentary on being a bystander to someone when someone is making really um, disparaging remarks about someone. And even if you're not joining in on teasing the person or making fun of them, um, not saying anything is not okay either. Um, and even if you, um, I say, even if you don't agree and you apologize to the person separately after, it's not okay to just apologize and say oh, I'm sorry that they said that to you um like you know you should try to god I've got cats everywhere today you should try to um about like speaking up and maybe trying to speak like speaking to your friend who is making those remarks and say that's not okay it's not cool that you're saying that you know all that that was one of my favorite parts about it um there is a the way that like the relationships were depicted I can't go into too much because it'd be a bit spoilery but I really really liked the way that that was depicted there is a lot of discussions of like racism like I said homophobia um depression um dealing with family and all that type of thing and just really like Terry's is just really growing 
like as a person, like, you know, he's in his teenage years and he's really finding out who he is as a person. I just thought it was really, really well done. Like I said, I liked the sequel even better than the first book and I gave it four stars. And the, um, the final book that I read this week was another one narrated. He is just like real joining me on this video. Who cares if I look bald if you've got cats in frame, huh? Um, I, the final audiobook or book in general that I read this week was The Wife by Meg Wallitzer. Um, so this one is narrated on audio by Dawn Harvey. And this is a literary fiction, I guess you would say, kind of women's fiction, but more like definitely with a more literary style. So we're basically following a woman um, who is a wife. And at the beginning of the no she's older. She's, I'm not sure exactly how old. I think they're maybe in their 60s, I think. Um, th and at the beginning of the novel, they're on a plane. Her and her husband are on a plane. They're traveling to Helsinki um, where her husband is going to be awarded um, a quite prestigious literary award. Um, he is a novelist um, and he's finally won this like, really prestigious award and they're going over for the like presentation of this award and she is on this flight when she makes the decision um like it all kind of hits her and she makes this decision that enough is enough and she's going to leave this marriage um after their trip to Helsinki or whatever um and that's basically what it's about now if you recall I tried I think two or three times this earlier this year to read The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer and ended up DNFing it. I just could not get along with it. And honestly, I seriously considered DNFing this at several different points and I probably would have except it is quite short. The physical book itself I think is only like 220 pages. The audiobook was only like seven or eight hours. And so I was just like, just push through and finish it. And so I did. And I will say I got more into it. I really struggle, um, I think, with her writing style. Like, I just don't think her writing style is for me. And I can't pinpoint what it is about her writing style that I don't like. But there's, there is something about it that I don't quite get on with. Um, and I will say that this has really positive reviews on um, Goodreads. The two people who I follow on Goodreads who have read this, um, one is Lala from Books and Lala and the other is Olive from a book Olive and they, I can't remember which is which, but one of them gave it five stars and the other one gave it four stars. And that was another reason why I was like, oh, just keep going. Like maybe it gets better. But I have just found this story incredibly dull. I, it, it has a lot of, so the main thing, it's like the story, the lot, like the commentary that it's trying to get across is all about the way women, um, have to kind of be less than themselves um, sometimes give up on their own dreams and hopes and wants in order to support the dreams and hopes and wants of a spouse. And that can be interesting commentary, but I just felt like, and like I said, Lala and Olive are both married. So maybe that's part of it. I'm single, never been married. Um, and maybe that's why I couldn't relate to it as much, but I just felt like this added nothing to this type of story. I've heard this story before. It didn't add anything new for me. I didn't particularly like either of the well you're not meant to like the husband but I didn't and I maybe you're not supposed to like the wife either um and I don't have to like my main characters but I just didn't get along with the story I didn't like the ending um I just overall it just wasn't for me and I ended up giving that two stars as well so I had two two star reads this uh, past week so uh in terms of my current read you may be noticing that there was a book not mentioned in this recent reads video that I did mention in my um, vlog that went up and that is my current read Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. So this is what I'm currently reading. I started this on Sunday last week and this is Saturday as I'm filming this and I still I don't even think I'm halfway. I might just be on halfway now. So how long is this? 850 pages exactly and I'm on page 419 so I'm not quite halfway so um th and that's nothing just against this book so this I won't go too much into what this is about or anything I'll get into that next week it's more that this is one of those books that when I'm reading it I'm enjoying it well enough but when I put it down I for some reason have no inclination to pick it back up I also have had um like a busier week I just haven't had as much time for reading um, like physical reading. Like I said, I got through three audiobooks throughout my work week, but I haven't. So like I said, I finished the two first books that I talked about were library books that I read on the weekend. And then the rest of the week, I read three audiobooks throughout the week and I didn't read anything else. Um, I read like 320 pages of this across 
something like that, maybe like 300 pages of this across um, the work week. And that's it, which is very, very unusual for me. But like I said, there were maybe times where I could have squeezed in some more reading, but I just, like I said, once I put it down, I was like, just never that inclined to pick it back up. So anyway, this is what I'm currently reading. Like I said, I'm about halfway. My main goal is to try to get this done this weekend, to really focus on reading as much of this as possible to hopefully get the second half of this read this weekend. Because to touch on my 30 and 30, you may notice that my numbers were a little down this week. So this, I'm just checking the date. Yeah, so this recent reads video takes us through the 25th. Um, and as of the 25th, I have read 22 books. So I'm now three books behind. I was a book behind going into this week. And then I, I said I only read five this week. So I'm now three books behind total which is a little alarming. Um, so we only have five days left of the month, including today. So I need to today get this finished, not today, but like I need to get this finished. And then I need to read probably at least two more, minimum two more physical books. Cause I'm hoping that I can read three audiobooks on one, like I can read an audiobook each on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And that's three. And then if I read that and two others, what's that? That's six, which would take... No, even that wouldn't be enough. That would only take me to 28. So I don't know. Maybe we're not going to hit it. I don't know. I do have a couple of graphic novels um, out from the library, not specifically for this, but that I have out from the library. So I could maybe squ squeeze those in at the end of the month um, if necessary because um, they're things that I'm going to read anyway, so I could squeeze them in at the end of September to try and get me over my goal. Maybe that's something that I'll do if it looks like, if I only need two more things, then that's probably what I'll do. I'll read those two graphic novels, but am I even going to be able to read those other things in order to get me to that only needing to read two more things? I'm not, I'm not confident. So we'll see. Um, it's not the end of the world if I don't read 30 and 30, but uh, yeah, that is kind of how my reading week has been going. Um, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of the books um, that I have been reading or if you want to talk about what you guys have been reading recently, how your reading is going. Like I said, this is definitely a bit of a slower week for me, but I'm really hoping that at least for this weekend and the first three days of next week, which is the final days of September, that things can pick up a little bit and I can get through a whole bunch of stuff. So possibly I could have a lot to talk to you guys about in next week's recent reads video because I need to read eight more books by Wednesday to hit 30 and 30 and then I still would have like two days left of um of that week like that would be October days so I could have a really big recent reads video for you guys next week but like I said love to chat with you guys in the comments down below please like this video if you liked it please subscribe if you want to see more of my channel that is all I have uh for this video today bye guys <laughs>